I invite Sue to say a few words of context and introduction, please. Okay, well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Chamber's marketing webinar um, in association with, with Kerry James, who's part of the Action Coach, Coach Network. Um, Kerry's been working with us more than more than ever now for the past um, 10 weeks during lockdown um, in order to help the, the Chamber deliver webinars on a range of so I do know that you'll get some great advice this morning. So unprecedented and challenging times, um, it's really been difficult to gauge what level of marketing activity we should be doing at the moment, how we should be doing it, how effective it's been. Um, but now that lockdown measures are beginning to ease gradually, we're all, and we're really all looking forward to getting our businesses back on track, it's absolutely the right time to focus on our marketing and you know, looking at the future, how we'll be adapting to the new way of working, um, that's kind of inev inevitable really. Um, we make our strategies, adapt our message, really embrace social media because that's going to be the, the way forward world that's been thrust upon us and you know none of us with, so our Zoom days are not disappearing yet. Um, so this morning Kerry's going to take you through his 12 steps on how to help you prepare so that you're ready to hit the ground running when the time is absolutely right. So Kerry, take it away. Great. Thank you very much, Sue. So just another little test for everybody. Can everybody uh, find the option to get, put your hands up? I may well ask you to put your hands up in various questions. So can everybody just find that option and put your hands up for me? Would that be okay? Great. Uh, I've got a full house. Great. I'm going to lower your hands now. Thank you very much. Uh, excellent. So the time is now. Very exciting. Coming out of lockdown. And I would argue that uh, absolutely a perfect time to think about where you are at as a business and what new different types of marketing might be appropriate to you and your business. So without further ado, let's get stuck into what the outcomes are for today. So uh, a, a few kind of contextual points about where are we now in terms of uh, coming out of lockdown. Obviously, it varies a little bit from business to business, but we'll spend a little bit of time just kind of reflecting where we're up to. What are the implications for marketing strategy? What are the implications for tactics with a, a particular focus on tactics and in particular digital tactics? Uh, how can marketing add value to your business? and what should be going into your business and marketing plans. So it's going to be pretty quick fire. So I would encourage you to grab a pen and paper and make some notes. Clearly not, not everything's going to be relevant to everybody, but uh, hopefully at least you'll take away one, two, maybe more uh, pearls of wisdom or action points that you think um, you should be applying to your business. So those are the aims and outcomes for today. It's going to be pretty quick fire. Just a little bit about me. Here's the embarrassing centre part in cool cut look from when I was about 13 or 14. Why did I put that in? Well, uh, that was about the time when my dad um, launched a couple of businesses that, that failed uh, and uh, a third one that, that worked out okay. Um, but part of the, the reason that what I do now is that Lots of small businesses uh, do continue to fail. If you look at the, the, static, the, the stats in uh, Cheshire East, it's something like 11% mortality. So if you open a business today, you're more, more likely to be dead than alive after five years. And obviously this year, the, the, the stats may, may, may change quite a lot. But um, that's part of why I do what I do now. Um, my career has been uh, with AstraZeneca uh, and with... Uh, marketing agencies, content marketing agencies. I've got a, a CIM diploma, my MBA is focusing on marketing. So, uh, you know, I'm pretty confident in the, in the area, but obviously lots of things are changing very rapidly with um, sales funnels and marketing funnels and all those types of uh, new things that are available to us. But I work as a business coach, so I don't actually supply any marketing services, but if my clients need market research or SEO or any of that type of thing, then uh, I've certainly got people in my network to, to help with that. So that's just a little bit about me and I'd like to strike a deal with you if it's okay in exchange for these pearls of wisdom over the next uh, 40 minutes or so um, please uh, can you put your hand up to say that you're happy to complete a feedback form at the end of this session does that sound like a reasonable uh, deal because feedback is important uh, and um, that would be great so I've got a full hands up thank you very much for that 
put your hands down now. Great, thank you for that. So let's uh, let's crack on. So it's been a very interesting few months, of course, and the point of this slide is is to not really share the detail, but to just share the thought that in the context of huge emotions of overwhelm and fear and anxiety and uh, disbelief etc uh, and high pressure what is required because those emotions lead to inaction what is required is a cool head logical analysis and thinking about where we are now what is going to happen around the corner what we need to do and where we need to focus so this is something we've been using with uh, our clients to think through uh, you know, what at a personal level needs to be considered uh, but the focus for today of course is going to be at the business level now depending on what business you're in and depending on you know when the lockdown is going to be relevant or, or the end of lockdown is going to be relevant to your business we are somewhere here of course and uh, I think it's fair to say probably about a third of businesses have been in lockdown about a third of businesses have had to in some way pivot change their marketing change their strategy which we'll come on to talk about and about a third of businesses, uh, whether it's delivery or uh, you know IT support for home communications uh, or uh, food shopping, um, you know quite a few businesses have absolutely boomed. Um, but depending on where you are, I think it's fair to say that marketing strategies and ramping up your marketing and doing new marketing is going to be absolutely crucial to thinking through where you are now, where you are going, and therefore where you're going to be at the end of the year so that's just a little bit of kind of context to say why uh, we think marketing is going to be pretty important wisdom starts with a good definition that's a uh, socrates quote and one of the th interesting things about marketing of course that it's meant to be a little bit about um you know positioning is is an important part of marketing so positioning being very clear about what you stand for and, and who you are but the irony, of course, is that, uh, you know, if we asked everybody in the room here to define marketing, we'd probably get five different uh, definitions. And then what, what kind of frustrates me is that particularly commentary on the radio um, uh, seems to suggest that some people think that marketing is about logos and colours and that's about it type of thing. So uh, let's be clear about what we're, what we're starting, uh, what we're talking about here today. Creating better value for chosen customers. So having a target customer and creating value for them. In other words, ensuring that they, the benefits that they receive as a result of your services or products exceed the costs of those, either in terms of the, uh, the money that they have to pay for them or that time they have to put in. So it's about value to the customers and in exchange for that, a profitable uh, growing business. So that's fundamentally what, uh, what we're talking about here when we're talking about marketing. I hope people are, uh, are comfortable, uh, comfortable with that. So what uh, what are we going to what are we going to discuss uh, at the strategic level? So there's been a lot of talk about the word pivoting, and I, I think some people don't really like it, and maybe it's because it's a bit of a an Americanism. And the, the focus of today is going to be somewhat more on the tactical side. But I think it's important to say up front that you know, what are the elements of strategic marketing excellence. Uh, and this is fundamentally about whether the COVID crisis and the downturn has meant that your business has had to change its business model. And again, that's kind of business speak, I guess. But what does a business model mean? It simply means who are your, who are your customers? What services and products are you supplying to them? How are they receiving those? Uh, and uh, how are you getting paid for them? So uh, the strategic marketing element of that is, is what is your branding? And I don't mean just uh, logos and colors there. I certainly mean, what is your reputation? And are you needing to pivot that link to the, the new environment? Um, do you brand yourself as one company or do you have separate uh, brands or services within your company? So what is your portfolio of products? Has that changed? Innovation, what are you doing new and differently? Um, how are you actually getting your uh, services to your market and that may well be a shift to e-commerce for example that a lot of businesses have seen how does your service or, or, or products fit into a broader customer delivery or customer experience i should say and finally integrating your communications having a kind of surround sound and making sure that your face-to-face -face communications from your people is coherent with what they're getting from online communications for example so i hope that's um a little uh 
bit of a, a useful overview of strategic marketing. And um, just seeing something's come into the chat, that's fine. Please do, as I say, anything uh, you've got questions, uh, please do put into the Q&A box. That would be, uh, that would be great. Have we got any so far? Okay, Sue, so will you be circulating the slides? I can share the slides, that's, that's absolutely fine. So thanks for that, uh, Judy. Um, and it's glad to hear that you think the slides are gonna be useful already. <laughs> okay, so, um, I hope that was useful just to give an overview, but the focus of today is more on the tactical side, but there's no doubt that some of you will have had to pivot your business and, and fundamentally change your, uh, your marketing strategy. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time, Sue mentioned the 12 points, and uh, hands up, um, well actually no, I'll, wait, I'll wait before I ask that question. The core outputs of marketing are customers and profits, and this is one of the key models we use within Action Coach to encourage uh, our clients to look at the whole area of marketing, sales and profits broken down into five different areas. So let's have a, let's have a hands up please from, uh, you know, choose a time period, maybe it's a month or a year, but would you be able to, off the top of your head, specify your numbers of customers, your turnover and your profit? If you can do that, could you put your hands up please? Okay, so we got uh, two out of three out of six so far. Okay, interesting. So half of you can specify the numbers of customers, your turnover and your profit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the point here is that these are very important, but they are results. And or outputs, I should say, and we can't change outputs, okay, of course, what we can change are the inputs. And the inputs in terms of uh, customer creation are the number of leads that you create and the conversion of those leads. And uh, once you have your customers, then the numbers of transactions each customer has in any particular period of time, times the average value of each of those transactions, creates your revenues, of course, and your revenues times your margins uh, creates your profits. So half of the people knew the red numbers there, the, uh, the customer's revenue and profit. Hands up, please, if you know all of the five different elements in your business. Does anybody claim to know each of those figures for your business? Interesting, nobody's putting their hands up. Sorry, I should say welcome to uh, Heather. And Heather, I'm just unmuting you. If you if you want to unmute yourself and say anything, please do so, okay? And so what, what is interesting is nobody's put their hand up. So, um, that, I mean, it's, it, it's, not, it, it's not unusual, but it's somewhat interesting, of course, that uh, people are aware of the things that you can't control, i.e. customers' revenue and profit, but not so aware of those things that you can control, and you should be testing and measuring regularly in your business, i.e. number of leads you're creating, the conversion rate of each of those leads, um, the, the number of transactions, the average value of the transactions and the profit margins. So um, these are five of the areas of marketing out of the 12 that we talked about. And uh, I don't know whether anybody's seen me do this before. You may have seen this, a little bit of mathematics for you. Uh, let's have, um, I'll, give, I'll give you the answer to this one. It's 32, uh, but I'm gonna give you another challenge. And uh, see, let's see who's quickest into the uh, Q&A box with the answer to this. So we had two times two times two times two times two. Who's, uh, who's brave enough to put uh, the answer? Who's gonna be quickest on the draw with this in the question and answer box, please? Not the chat box, the question and answer box. Oh, Carl is the winner. Well done, Carl. Um, two, four, three. So it uh, took obviously a little bit longer than the, 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 uh, the first one. And it's, it's a very quick illustration of the, the power of, of marginal gains. You're breaking down a problem, making a small 
increase to each of the elements of that problem creates a big overall impact now um, you know it's a, it's a bit of a um, poetic license I guess here of course the figure two can be increased by less than uh, fifty percent as it has done here uh, but nevertheless uh, you know this is a significantly greater figure than uh, five times a 50% increase here. That's the power of multiplication, of course. So um, in case you're interested, 243 is 659% greater than uh, the figure 32. So if you apply that principle to our five ways, let's just put in some numbers and let's just say uh, you're in a business that has 4,000 leads, say, per year with a 25% conversion rate. That gives you 1,000 customers. They each buy twice a year at £100 each, gives you your revenue, 200000 profit margin, 25%, gives you 50000 And if you increase each of these by just 10%, then let's have a look at the impact there. So 1.1 uh, times 1.1 is 1.21, so your, your customers go up by 210. Transactions go up by 10%, average sales go up to 110 and that increases your revenue by 46%. And if you increase your profit margins by, not up to 10%, but by, uh, by 10%, in other words, 25 to 27.5, that takes your profits up to a 61% increase. So if you can look at each of those areas and increase each of those by 10%, it can have a significant difference to your business. So I really would encourage you if that's one uh, takeaway from today, to start measuring each of those five areas. The number of leads that you get, the conversion rate of those leads, the number of transactions, uh, average value, and your profit margins. And if you can do that against broken down and specific to your business, you might, for example, want to look at existing customers compared to new customers. You might want to look at by product line or service line. But simply by starting to measure those, you'll focus on them more and start to increase them. So this is, as a business coach with Action Coach, this is what we spend a lot of time pressing our clients and being quite robust with um, encouraging them to think about more and more ways of adding strategies and tactics to each of those five areas. So you can see the, the figures there have fallen off the bottom. We've got at least 50 tactics for each of those five areas. We've got over 350 altogether. And the argument is uh, you should be able to increase each of those elements by at least 10% if we work together for a year and therefore increase the overall uh, profits by 61%. So typical, uh, typical uh, results increase from our Clients are about 40% in sales and about 60% in profits. And, and that um, sounds like a lot, but when you break it down and realize that you can increase each of the elements, then it doesn't sound like, like too much. So hopefully that's one powerful uh, way of looking at the contribution of marketing and sales, of course, to, uh, to your, your profits, which is one of the key outputs of marketing. So now I'm going to slightly switch tack and uh, complete those 12 elements by looking at seven elements of digital marketing. And I've tried to simplify uh, the, these into, as I say, seven areas and look at each uh, one at a time and to get you thinking about how good you are against each of the seven elements to take away specific actions to apply in your business. And, you know, some areas may be apps, for example, you know, cut across. I don't specifically refer to, to, um, to AI, for example. Uh, but let's just have a look at these one at a time. But obviously there are some crossovers and links. So we were having this discussion this morning. I have, we have regular... Um, Action Coach uh, webinars is about 240 action coaches throughout the UK. So we've been uh, meeting uh, very regularly to, to, to share updates and thoughts on how we're helping our customers through this crisis. And uh, database marketing is, um, is crucial. And if I just kind of take a step back, I think it's fair to say, and I read somewhere, I think it was yesterday, that this whole COVID crisis has moved on the digital, online, virtual, whatever you want to call it agenda by five years in about three months. So there's no doubt that um, 
digital marketing is, is I think, going to go way up the agenda for all of us. And I think with the, the area of database, the challenge is uh, across sales and marketing. And the discussion this morning was, uh, as you may know, uh, HubSpot, uh, Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, these are three of the big players amongst others in this uh, database uh, customer relationship management space. And the challenge is, you know, what is relevant to your business? How do you collect specific subsets of your customers? And how do you coordinate this across your sales efforts and across your marketing efforts for new clients, for prospects, and your marketing efforts for existing clients? But I do think that if you haven't got some sort of CRM strategy in place, then now is probably a very good time to look at your options. And uh, one of the points that came out from this morning, and I made a note here, um, HubSpot have got a COVID offer on. Normally it's £80 per month, uh, now it's £42 per month, and that includes their sales and marketing elements. So uh, this is something I'm grappling with. I'm not pretending to be that I'm the great expert on this. Uh, I have a marketing automation system and I'm just considering how to integrate it with the sales, uh, the sales system as well. But thinking that through, being able to send regular newsletters to your customers, being able to do specific email campaigns to subgroups of your customers, all of that, of course, uh, is enabled and saves a huge amount of time and effort through uh, an automated system uh, or, or a CRM. So getting a CRM strategy in place, I think, is, is, is a key element of marketing at the moment. That's the first, that's the starting point. And linked to that is, uh, is content marketing. So I, I worked for a, a while for a content marketing platform and uh, the, they would be one of the businesses that have certainly thrived. And this was in the healthcare technology space. And the model there was writing great, great content uh, that, that creates uh, so-called inbound marketing. In other words, you, your potential customers find you based on the quality of your content. Uh, and on the basis that for anything that we buy, I think it, I think that is 85 to 90% starts with a search on Google. And therefore getting onto the first page of the first page of Google for keywords relevant to your business is absolutely crucial. And the way you get there is the reach that you have through your uh, website or through your content, how relevant it is to the search and to the audience, what reviews you've already got, how quick your website is, um, and whether the content is written for both the audience and for Google. So it meets the insights of the audience, but also links to the keyword analysis and the structure that Google looks for in relation to your content. So I'm sure some of you are familiar with some of the um, H1, H2 uh, meta descriptions, all that good uh, website design that needs to be taken into account in terms of optimizing your content uh, and of course finishing off your content with some sort of next step some sort of call to action is a crucial element of content marketing as well so there's no doubt that um, content marketing is uh, going to become more important in my view so what are you doing there in terms of cre creating more regular more relevant content and putting it out more regularly across the range of platforms. So content marketing. And linked to that, of course, is search engine optimization, SEO. Um, so again, knowing exactly what your keywords are, designing your content to ensure that Google finds you compared to other people uh, is, 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 I think, going to be another example of growing importance and certainly website designers and SEO providers have been one of the companies that have done very well over the last month or so and I suspect as businesses get back to work and realize the, uh, the great shift to digital then again search engine optimization is is going to be crucial and it's it's interesting on here backlinks is on there so that just illustrates how quickly everything's moving backlinks were very important a couple of years ago not so much now the algorithms have somewhat changed so keeping on top of the algorithms that um, uh, that, that google in particular uses 
and understanding that to ensure that you optimize your organic content for organic search uh, is, uh, I would argue, another key element within, uh, within the overall area of marketing. I've said a fair few points about SEO. Um, I would also emphasize the need to regularly update your website, of course, and keep it relevant uh, and keep it moving and keep it uh, fueled with new and relevant content. So that's the third area. Um, mobile, and here's just a, a little tip. Um, it, you might wanna make an, a little note of that. This is a, just a Google tool to test how mobile friendly your site is um, and how well it works across mobile compared to desktop devices because uh, I think the figure is over 50% of content is viewed over a mobile device now. So making your content mobile friendly uh, is, I would argue, a key element to, uh, to the impact of COVID and where you need to go with your marketing. So I don't know whether anybody recognizes uh, this. This is something called Microsoft HoloLens. Um, and this is a mixture of virtual reality and augmented reality, so-called mixed reality. And this is where, for example, when you wear these special Microsoft HoloLens glasses, you can have markers on things like posters. So you might, for example, have a poster with a physical drawing of the COVID virus on, for example. Uh, and when you look at that poster through your Microsoft HoloLens, that image turns into a video of the mode of action of, of how antibodies to the COVID virus works and therefore destroys the virus. So whether it's video, whether it's virtual reality, whether it's augmented reality, there is huge opportunity of bringing your content to life, bringing the understanding of your products and your services to life in many uh, innovative ways. So I think being at the forefront of that is, is going to be uh, important. I think the demand for videographers is probably going to go up, uh, but finding ways of engaging your customers through visual, virtual, video, uh, um, virtual reality, augmented reality, all those challenging and interesting areas, I think is going to be a hugely growing area within uh, marketing. Can I, why don't I just kind of pause for breath there a little bit and encourage any questions and just uh, see if, if anybody's got any observations or if you want to unmute yourself and say anything about what I've said so far, why don't I just uh, at least take, take a glass of uh, a drink of my tea and give people a chance and, and encourage people to uh, uh, to say any observations or reflections or, or, or questions. Any any key learning so far? Come on, people. Let's have, a bit, let's have a bit of interactivity. I don't want to just hear my voice for, for 40 minutes. Okay, Kerry. Um, well, just personally, from my own point of view, um, I have a very small business. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm at a stage in my life where I've, um, um, I've, I've, I'm winding down. I'm doing less and less. Um, the COVID situation means I've got to rethink what I am doing and, and do more of one thing and do I go down the Zoom route with the other. And, um, so all this is, it's brilliant, but it's, it's, um, I suppose it's, it's for bigger businesses and I just wonder how many other people are you know are working in businesses large enough and um you know that, that would would make what we've had so far um you know um useful stuff i i've i've so so far because of the because of the stage in my business that I am um, and this is I prop this is why I didn't speak a, a initially because it's probably probably that other people aren't aren't in the same situation um, 
I just wonder, you know, how, how it's going down with other people. And whether other people might have specific situations that might be worth discussing. Okay, so uh, I, that sounds like an invitation to ask, get a response from other people. Anybody got any views against Judy's, Judy's comment there? One of the key things for uh, Rosendale has been the big change when uh, we all had to go home, so to speak. Um, so there's a big learning curve uh, in terms of technology. A lot of uh, people at the Rosendale Trust struggled with technology to some extent, especially when they had to go out of their comfort zones. So there was a massive learning curve there. And one of the things that, you know, you've said was the digital world moved on five years in three months. That's something that kind of I've felt, but kind of not heard articulated in a way. And that, that's, that's really telling. And that's, that's one of the big things that the trust that we need to take on is this sort of this revolution in a way. And uh, so, Carl, if I can just ask then, clearly um, a change in how our staff operate and where they operate and how they interact and, and challenges associated with that in terms of leadership and team management uh, is, is one whole completely different area to today's topic but what about uh, how you engage and interact with customers how, how do you see the implications of, of the downturn in that in relation to your uh, your business well there's always been a bit of a marriage between uh, our digital marketing and our kind of um, analog marketing if you like uh, events things like that things that we do to raise funds for our charity um of course most of our events if not all of them have now been cancelled or postponed which is a significant impact on us as a charity so the digital side has come into it into the fore so we're working on ways that we can raise funds through digital marketing and that's become the you know that is that 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 stream has come become much more of a river and become more important to us okay what what specifically on the digital marketing side are you adopting then carl well there's things that we've done many times before but we, we create films to promote um events that we may be doing in the future or for um, digital events that we're doing. So we're do currently, to be honest, currently we're doing now, one of the phrases that we seem to have adopted at the Trust is making sure people know the lights are still on. Um, because, you know, it, it, seems, it seems a little quiet out there. So we, we need to make sure we're doing that. So we have uh, one of the things that we've done is uh, we have a, a quarterly magazine that's now gone monthly. It was printed, now it's just digital. Um, so that's been sent out. So we're thinking out how we can market that um, that newsletter to make sure people know the lights on at the Rosendale Trust. Okay. Okay. Any anybody else want to share any of the uh, the, the challenges or how you're dealing with the, the current circumstances? Or, or Grace, you may want to say one or two things about, about how you're helping your clients on the IT side. I don't know. Anybody else want to want to want to contribute? I and, suppose and for for us, it's. Um... It's quite, um, I don't know, ironic really, because obviously we um, are sort of, uh, we're a technology company, we're a Microsoft partner, so everything we sell is Microsoft. And when you talk about the CRM and the HoloLens, like that's what we do. We, we build CRM systems and for, for, pe for companies. And, you know, the HoloLens is definitely something that we've been, you know, looking at since the start. Um, and I suppose we've been trying, like our whole aim is to have got, you know, get this information out. That's what we've been doing for, for years. Um, but it's kind of ironic that now it's like everyone suddenly needs it. And it's uh, for us, it's just trying to sort of get out basically what we've already been doing, but at, at this time sort of tailor it to, you know, where businesses are really sort of, um, you know they're suddenly realizing this is what they need to do is sort of move forward with the time so yeah uh, that's really my challenge at the moment is just trying to amplify everything that we're doing and make sure that people know we're here and uh, we've been here a long time that's what we're doing okay one of the one of the challenges i had in a previous life grace was to roll out microsoft dynamics um any reflections or thoughts about uh, coming back to the point i was saying about crms about how microsoft dynamics compares differs uh, in relation to the crm challenge how it, how it covers both sales and marketing any particular observations on that to be honest i'm probably not the best person to ask um 
I'm not the most technical uh, person. If you talk to a lot of the technicians, they know a lot more than uh, than I do. Um, I just think for what you know, we are a Microsoft partner, so everything we sell is Microsoft. Um, so obviously, we're gonna we're gonna say that's the best one. But I re it, I, I really think it depends on the business and um, what they're trying to achieve and their goals. Um, I mean where how i work is i use most you know most of the microsoft stuff but there's always going to be other tools and even like free re resources online that i still go to religiously um but yeah i think there's lots of ways of doing it um obviously we would say the microsoft route is the best one but <laughs> it really depends on the size of your business and what you want to spend and, and sure. what you okay. want to as well and Heather or Steve, can I, any, can I encourage you any uh, observations or thoughts or questions at this stage? Yeah, uh, can you hear me? I, we can, thank you Heather, yes. Oh good, hello, sorry I was late. Uh, well obviously my boot is completely on the other foot because I am in print advertising, that is, that's what I do and have done for 15 years. So um, we did print the April one, it was literally going through the rollers as uh, Boris was locking us down. So um, I sent some out to the Royal Mail to print, but in the end, I didn't uh, deliver it because I didn't feel it was right. Although I still have to pay for the print, I didn't charge any of my customers. My version, which we do anyway every month, but I promoted it a bit more. I just got a few out there. I didn't do one at the beginning of May, but now I'm doing a joint issue, um, a May June one, and it's going out to the whole of our distribution from tomorrow. So that's thirty-five thousand copies. Um, we're, we're a few pages down because some of the uh, advertisers aren't actually back working as yet but to be honest most people are we put a lot of content in and um, got it out there so we'll just wait and see I mean but I do realize perhaps we going forward um, I need to do a bit more digitally I have got um, an idea which comes from my CRM which I use which is specific to magazine producing which will help um, people with their SEO as well via our website so you know I've done a lot of thinking over the last six weeks two months as you can imagine um, and will you will you have a digital version of your magazine we always have a digital version every month okay, it goes right. on onto our website um, which is then promoted so we've been doing that for um, well, on the website a couple of years now before that there was a, an online version which people could um have if they wanted but it actually goes on the website every month now anyway so i mean i have noticed quite a few of my customers trying out their facebook route and everything but on the other hand i've had a lot of people say to me we've missed it we haven't seen it because they just don't really go on social media or facebook so it's a double-edged sword really so i just yeah. have to keep calm have faith in what i do we have the biggest distribution of any other pre printed medium in the area and it's a good place to go out with them and i think what i've seen is i just have to promote that that as far as printed media go we are the biggest in the area so people should have faith in us and because we're local as well um we know what's what we know who's who we're not from out of town so we just have to sort of try and promote that because mm -hmm. people are a bit sniffy about it and i know that um so it's just it's just an, i mean uh, the way i'm seeing it going forward is i'm promoting the fact that there are different ways of marketing a business and any business needs to market themselves in different ways to get the best success and, and a combination yeah. so not only you know social media but print marketing as well depending on what they do but it's the combination that will reach to the biggest variety of prospective customer okay that's my bit keep keep calm carry on maybe slightly differently to before very good steve any other th input thoughts questions from you yeah thanks gary we're a, a live event company so um our business just died um in april at the beginning um end mm. of may march um and so we have had to pivot um as some people are calling it into <laughs> virtual um we've we've always had a, a bit of a um, a foot in that in that uh, game because obviously live events uh, some people can't attend uh, some people some customers want to expand their market out to um, other uh, countries etc who can't who can't attend a live meeting so we've always had a, a, a webex or a, a webcast 
element to some of the events. Um, but we suddenly had to turn everything from live hybrid straight to virtual. Um, we created a studio in Manchester with uh, one of our video and audio suppliers to um, manage the virtual events. So we're using the Zoom platform uh, such as this, but um, the, the value added that we give to, to clients when producing meetings is the management of the, of the uh, faculty and ensuring that the, the thing runs smoothly and professionally. And the only way to do that, we found, is, the, is to have communication channels open with the presenters. And we've worked a, a way of doing that through Zoom so that we can um, cue presenters, we can prepare them, make sure the sound and video is crisp and uh, focused before, they, uh, before we make them live in the meeting. Um, and that's been quite successful. The, um, the problem we've got is getting it in front of people. Uh, the only way people get it is when they see a demo of it um, and uh, we've made a video of it um, which we're sending out but um, nothing uh, nothing uh, changes their mind about it uh, like a proper demo so okay. that's why I'm on the, the call today to and, and I take up Heather's point about targeted marketing that's that's the thing I'm interested in okay Okay, we'll certainly come on to talk a bit more about that on, on the social media side. Just one kind of story or um, example of it, I guess extreme pivoting, but in your marketplace, one of my colleagues works with an events company and they're ex extremely strong on the sales side. And their pivot was to actually, out because as, as, as you mentioned before, Steve, their, their business literally dropped off a cliff with, the, <laughs> with lockdown. Um, and they actually outsourced their sales team to... Um, it was an educational supplier that was producing online, I think it was online training for teachers. Oh, yeah. It was some type of package to help a teacher's transition to online learning themselves. And, in, in, you know, as, as, uh, as children had to be taught from home. Yeah. So um, and it, it, quite an extreme pivot, but um, um, one, one that I thought was quite, a, quite interesting, simply using their, their excellent selling skills but in a completely new marketplace, mm -hmm. in a different model. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for all those reflections. I think the, the uh, just let me come back on um, uh, Judy's point or Judy's question. I think obviously the, the point of today, I guess, is to give a flavour across um, a range of different areas and to see which are relevant to your business. Um, but I would argue that even if you are a one-man band, um, you'd, you still probably have a network of people that you work with, even if they're not uh, employee colleagues. And there will probably be some elements of your either your promotion or your business that will be affected by uh, the downturn and probably mean some sort of adjustment to either your strategy or some of your uh, some of your tactics. And um, so, yes, uh, you know, I take your point, Judy, that a lot of this might be more relevant to larger businesses with, with maybe bigger marketing budgets. Um, but uh, even if um, you're a one man band, uh, as I am, for example, um, I think it does it does still require a, a somewhat of a, a shift in what you do and, and how you do it and, and how you mix up a, a greater element of digital into your activities. OK, great. Well, thanks for that. Did you did you want to come back, Judy? Yeah, just just to say thank you, and um, you know, I, I I did realize that I was a you know probably a, a one off, but I nobody else was speaking, so I thought I'd just kick the ball off. Well, and absolutely. Well, th thank you for doing that. Absolutely, thank you for doing that. Okay, so um, we've got just uh, what seven or eight slides to go, so I'll dive. I'll I'll carry on if that's uh, okay with everybody. But please do. Let's say either unmute yourself and share it out or put something in the question and answer box. So visual, virtual and video, we've done that bit. Social media, it was bound to come at some uh, stage. It's only getting bigger. I think um, the point I would make is that my, well, my recommendation would be to choose two platforms that are relevant to your business. Uh, if you're in business to business, then LinkedIn is definitely going to be one of them because 80% of leads for business to business that are generated over social media are generated over LinkedIn and I ran a 
LinkedIn session for the Chamber about a month ago now or so, and that's on my website if anybody wants to uh, look at that. But uh, anyway, I'm digressing a little bit. <laughs> my point was that whether it's Pinterest or YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram, uh, I think the starting point is which of those is most relevant to your audience and do a great job of two out of those five or six platforms. And uh, whatever you do do, please have the <coughs> analytics in place to measure those reactions and test and measure what you do, how you do it, and, and what seems to work. Because there's no doubt that um, uh, the opportunities and the audience and the ability to target audiences through social media is only going up. So. For example, I don't know whether people realize this, but um, YouTube, YouTube ads is one way that you can actually target quite a local audience. That's possibly an area that people aren't so familiar with. I think people generally are more familiar with uh, Facebook advertising. The other top tip I think I'd give in this area is that if, you, if you're working on LinkedIn and Facebook, then you can, of course, uh, extract your con your contacts from LinkedIn um, or your connections, I should say, and use that as a target audience for Facebook advertising. So there are ways of crossing over from dif different social media platforms. Uh, and so the starting point is who you want to target and where they are going to be congregating and understanding the strengths and weaknesses of the different platforms. So LinkedIn, for example, is not so strong on geographic targeting, whereas Facebook and YouTube are, for example. So um, it's only getting bigger. And uh, I think it's fair to say that social media in some shape or form should probably be part of your marketing mix. But it's important to think through thoroughly what you're trying to achieve. The other overarching observation, I think, is that, of course, we can spend lots and lots of time doing free organic social media activities. Um, the challenge with that is lots and lots of other people are doing it. So it may be worthwhile biting the bullet, investing in some sort of uh, advertising through uh, uh, either Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn, uh, testing different options because that may well be a good way of standing out from the crowd. If everybody's zigging, then it's probably a good idea to zag. So. Um, uh, because they're so easy to, to use free, uh, that means that um, the opportunity to, uh, to do advertising is, is probably a, a, a not a bad idea. And it's certainly, uh, and I'll come on to this point about uh, advertising, uh, I would argue it's a good idea at this stage to do Google AdWords, Google advertising, pay-per-click AdWords on Google because the level of activity of uh, many people has gone down on Google, therefore it's a lot easier to get up to that first page for the keywords that are relevant to your business. And again, uh, Google Ads is, of course, uh, one way of very precisely targeting a local audience if, if, um, if local is of importance and relevance to you. So um, certainly thinking about how online advertising, whether that's banner adverts, whether that's Google ads, whether that's pay-per-click, how that fits into your uh, marketing is an important part of that. And uh, you know, I would argue that now is a very good time, particularly taking into account the point about Google AdWords, um, to, uh, to do that. I think the other point that I, I, I didn't make a separate point about landing pages, but I think there's a, a, probably quite a good general point here to make that whilst we all kind of use and know that our websites are kind of at the center of the jigsaw of all these pieces, I wouldn't underestimate the power of landing pages. So having a, uh, a landing page, which is specific to a particular campaign that you've got means that you can be very, very single minded. And so linking an advert through to a landing page with a video on and having a call to action on that landing page, creating some sort of funnel sales funnel, linking these various things together. Uh, should be, uh, I think, an effective way of uh, uh, of integrating some of these different elements. So don't underestimate the power of landing pages. And if you want to understand more about that, we can have a, we can have a further discussion about that. So uh, what uh, whatever you're doing, I would say do 
do some test and measure on that, get regular analytics to see what's working, what's not working, whether that's Google Analytics or insights from Facebook or insights from LinkedIn, you know, depending on what you're doing, make sure your analytics are in place. So those are seven areas that I would add to the, the previous five ways of uh, growing your profits. And overall, I say, you know, what we are doing now, between now and the next six weeks, I think will be crucial to where we are at the year end. So uh, I think the time to plan is now more than ever. Uh, I've actually got a planning session tomorrow morning. It's still not too late to join up for that. And on the uh, feedback form, if you'd like uh, details of that, you can, you can certainly have those. Uh, so we run a regular 90-day planning service um, and we encourage people to, to develop goals, actions, responsibilities, timings over 90 days so they can convert those into weekly plans and daily plans. So if that's something of interest, then now I would argue is absolutely the time to get a plan in place if you haven't done already to think about your staff, your suppliers and your customers, of course. So with that, um, what I'm going to do is to encourage further uh, further questions and I'm going to put into the uh, the chat box a link to a short questionnaire as promised at the start of the session and if you can spend just three or four minutes um, completing that whilst uh, opening up the microphones to further discussion and questions that would be absolutely great please so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to uh, just pick up that link and put it into the chat box if that's okay with everybody. This is a Microsoft form, if, uh, in case anybody's wondering what I'm doing and how I'm doing it here. We'll go back to Zoom. And I go to, let's have a look, chat. Here we are. Paste. So if you go to that link, Oh, that's a very long link, isn't it? That should, is that, is that working okay? Maybe I need to do that. There we go. So, um, hands up if you can see that in the chat box. Anybody, please, just to reassure me that you can see that. Or just unmute your microphone and talk, whichever. No, I can't see it, Kerry. In the chat box, from me to all panellists, I've just put a link in. No. Not not in the Q and A, but in the chat box. No, both. I've got open. I can't see them. From me to oh, sorry. From me to ah, uh, there we go. From me to all panelists and attendees is what I should have done. There we go. Thank you, Carl. And That's now you it. can see it. So thank you. Yeah, interesting. So the default setting in my chat box was to all panelists, which meant that Sue could probably see it, but nobody else. So now it's gone to all attendees. So. There's only about five or six questions on there. Um, as part of this overall uh, challenging situation, I'm offering free half hour coaching sessions to um, any small business owner. If you'd like to take advantage of that, then there's the opportunity to do that. Uh, we run health checks. We run the business planning session that I'm talking about tomorrow. Uh, so uh, there's five or six questions on there that enable you to provide feedback to this session and also to take up uh, those opportunities if they are of interest to you. So whilst you are doing that, I'm going to encourage anybody else to open up their microphone and share any thoughts, uh, share any feedback, add any questions. Maybe you're all diligently doing the question. I can see that you're all self-muted. Uh, are you self-muted or is it me? I think I've done what I need to do at this side, this side to unmute you all. I think people are busy filling in the form, Kerry. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank oh, you, Judy. Okay. I'm impressed by the diligence and the application. So we'll just give you a couple of minutes to do that. And then I will uh, close my contribution to the session and Invite, invite Sue to reflect and close. So please just give me some sort of signal, some sort of hands up or shout when you've uh, completed that short questionnaire. That would be great. Thank you very much.
Just so you know, Sue, uh, it was Anthony that was with us before and he did send a note. You may have seen it. He had to he had to take a call, I think he said. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. And Grace has had to leave as well. Grace, what, just so I've got the details, I should have them on the webinar anyway, but uh, Anthony's surname, just remind me, do you know, Sue? Uh, Ward. Ward. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Getting some good feedback here, Kerry. Well, fun, interestingly, I'm talking about technology, new technology. This is the first time I've ever used Microsoft Form. So in case um, people aren't aware of it, this is part of your Microsoft 365 package. And it's very easy to design a form and it's very easy to um, insert a link as I have done today. So um, I'm sure Grace would have had a view on this, <laughs> would have had some probably greater knowledge than me. But um, yeah, actually, I took it as a tip from a colleague who's, who's working with another chamber up on the other side of Manchester. Um, so it's funny how sometimes we only realise the functionality of what we've got um, by uh, extensive sharing and, and usage. So uh, if anybody's interested, that's how I designed the form and that's how I got the link. You simply design your online form and then it, and it enables you to share. There's some very powerful tools out there, aren't there? It's just... Yeah. Um, you know, becoming aware of them and uh, it's situations like this that uh, they really come into their own. So, Kerry, does this package include um, video if you want it, if you choose it? Because I've only used... do you, Sorry, do you mean the forms package? No, the, um, the Microsoft 365 package that you said this Zoom type thing no sorry sorry i was referring to the software for the survey that you're completing oh i see right okay. yeah so so the survey is something that was designed in something called microsoft forms right so but if you go to your microsoft button or you know bottom left that uh, the, the wavy flag and search forms then right. that will take you to a your the browser with the MS Forms. You can design a survey and create the link and embed that link to wherever you'd like to put it, and it allows you to analyze the feedback as well. In fact, why, why don't I just uh, why don't I stop sharing my screen and show you? Thanks, Kerry. I'll have to go now, but um, I will okay. be in touch. Um, okay. Sorry, I can't do the one in the morning, but um, I'll be hauling boxes that's something i could do with getting rid of <laughs> i'll um, i'll speak to you soon thanks okay, bye thanks heather all the best thanks bye now okay well i'm uh i'm guessing people are coming to the end of feet of completing that uh form i would just like to finish off with the <laughs> encouragement to whatever learning you've taken away from today please do act upon it 
uh, and uh, you know I'm, I'm an action coach not a sit around and think about it coach so uh, please do uh, take some action from the learning from today and I look forward to the feedback and of course uh, sharing it and discussing with yourself Sue but with that I'll hand back to you Sue with any further reflections and to close the meeting thank you thank you Kerry Re really uh, interesting I found everybody's comments this morning very interesting and um, because I could totally relate to them all you know the chamber is is very much about um, events bringing people together um, we've had to postpone all our events so you know this sort of format of doing zoom webinars has been has replaced all our our face-to-face -face events um heather talking about the, the publication our, our chamberlink magazine that's gone totally online this issue um grace talking about it you know i i've learned personally that never has having a really robust it um system in place so important you know there have been a few um little um not not disasters but you know the, <laughs> things that uh, haven't gone quite according to plan along the uh, the way so uh, yeah i can totally relate to absolutely everything you know even judy saying she's a, a small business well you know so is the chamber very small so uh, yeah interesting and and thank you Kerry as ever you've been giving us some really really good advice so um our, our next webinar is next week and it's quite interesting actually because it's sort of a um moving on slightly from where we've been today it's um would a digital worker add value to your business and that's really taking things to a another level and probably um bringing something forward that might might have been previously something we'd have looked for in the future you know but uh, so that's next wednesday if anybody's interested so thanks to you um who are, who are left thank you for coming this morning and thank you kerry and um we'll see you again soon hopefully you're welcome thanks, thank you Sue. thanks everybody all the best thanks, see you kerry. thanks kerry cheers thank you bye 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 bye, -bye. Sue, did you want to stay on? Are you still there? Yes, you are. Still here. Yes. So. Yeah, I think that was really interesting. Good. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, from my point of view, hearing everybody's issues, which, as I say, I can totally, totally get. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's good. It's kind of comforting to know that you're all in the same boat in a way. Um, yeah, well, that, with those numbers, I thought it was sensible to press them a little bit on a bit more engagement and, and yes, uh, yeah, share what their perspectives are. Yeah, I think I that's I encouraging. Just carry on. Good to make people talk. Yeah, yeah. And it was interesting. You said you're getting some good feedback. How? Uh, what were you? How did you see no, the well, feedback? No, I just meant the length of time it was taking everybody. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. I assumed well, it. I didn't. Be I didn't like to ask you. I thought, hey, hang on a minute. How are you seeing the feedback? <laughs> Good stuff. Um, all right, Sue, any progress with Esther? I don't, don't suppose. So, not yet, today? not yet, yeah. no. That's on my hit list today. Okay. And you got those couple of questions that I had in my inbox from last from... Um, I did, thank you. Yes, I think yeah. I had one of them already. Um, yeah. I didn't have Jack Dunlop, so that was helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. All right, and Sue, well, I will definitely find a way. I think I can expert export the analysis of the feedback so i'll send that to you of course good great and i will wait to hear from you about dates from esther from esther yeah and um as and when we find that uh, maybe we'll get another one in the in the diaries we said in three or Definitely. four weeks fit, fitting around that yeah yeah great i think okay, we're, great. we're getting better we're getting better at these i think sue yeah, yes. getting better at the technology. I thought I thought Steve's idea was um, interesting on Which how to that? run a Zoom session. Yeah. So what what was the point he was making there? Sorry. Well, he he was he runs a um, live production company. Yes. And he was focusing on actually running Zoom sessions for people. So you know, a little bit like you've done with David Rutley, I suppose yes yeah on their behalf yeah it's kind yeah. of um yeah so taking away all the yeah. 
all the headaches that you know you have of having to actually be the presenter and do the the technical stuff as well yeah well i think team tagging is is uh, something i certainly do in other meetings um, and so it's good that we had the two of us although there was obviously what not so many people there today but i think it's useful to have somebody checking on this chat and on the q a separate to the person who's actually talking at the time yeah well i i was answering the questions i mean it was only really about are there going to be slides and sorry i've got to go now you know but, yeah yeah um, okay yeah, so I will I will send through a PDF of the slides then. Okay. Um, so you you weren't going to do any separate feedback. I would have today. thought you'd got enough from yeah. from what you've done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, what will will you just send the PDF to all the attendees and a thank you? Or do you want me to do I that? Or I think I think I'll probably send it to everybody if that's okay with you. Fine. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. Um, all the registrants, you mean? Yeah. Okay. So if you yeah. and you if you can copy me in on that, and that I'm and sure. if I can just follow up on that and I say if if anybody wants to discuss this, that, and the other, then please get yes. in touch. Yeah, okay. I'll do one one email to the people that attended and one to who who didn't, and you know just tweet the message. Perfect, lovely. Yeah. All right, Sue. Okay. Yeah, in the garden this weekend. Pardon? Yeah, in the garden this weekend. Definitely. <laughs> not, much, not much else to do. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I keep threatening to get my bike out, but uh, I've not managed it yet. It's too hilly round here. <laughs> Where about you, Sue? I'm in Presbury okay which yeah. which side um near the station that side oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. come past come past there regularly from so my uh my mother-in-law is you know near the bull's head on Motram, oh, yeah. in Motram. So yeah uh, oh of course yeah um mary mary carden mary carden yes that's right what, what, what was the what was the, the uh, connection the connection again it was your partner my, my partner other half um is part of the lloyd jones family right. and um i think your wife um is it Eclu? auntie auntie yes ethlew yes that eckers that's yes. right i think that's she used right. to babysit she, you, she get my teeth in she used to babysit my wife Charmaine. is that the connection right well my partner ewan is um Ethelieu's younger brother got you okay yeah had to put the younger in then <laughs> and is is um is she still alive then oh yes is yes she? i wonder she, where she, mary she, lasora well um Eckers lives um in over Alderley now and she lives with mm. uh, a guy called bobby hepworth um who's affectionately known as bobby the boyfriend and um they live up near um over the big hall up there um oh, Bertles. Okay. Bertles oh yeah. yeah with the, with the it's been converted into smaller apartments now is it one of uh one of our other family friends lives there right um, and i've have been there once what what would uh, what would her surname be now then uh, sue Echo. it's still the same um mm. rustale rustale yeah rustale r-u-s-d-a-l-e yes and how yeah. do you actually spell her first name do you know is it e double no. l is it is it welsh i don't actually you know you're welsh actually well actually e double l yeah e double l i e w something like that yeah yeah well yeah but my, she, mum, my mum's my mum's name she says this to everybody by the way so i'm, I'm beginning to sound like my parents but my mum's name is irwin i-e-i-r-w-e-n which means snow white in welsh there you go which means what no white no ah uh, no one okay no snow white oh snow white oh yeah. really <laughs> oh lovely <laughs> so I sometimes follow that up with, with saying, and would you believe that I've got I've got six brothers and all of them are really, really short. 
And so, some people who don't know me, don't even believe me to start with. So yeah, there we go. So unusual Welsh names is something that I am pretty comfortable with, given my name as well, of course. So very good. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Mary when she last saw Ashley, whether they're still in uh, contact. Very good. Uh, yeah, they, they may be. I mean, Bobby's um, got quite um, a sort of an estate up at, um, at Bertles. Um, but he's he's going to be a hundred this year oh, in August, wow. and I think wow. um, is eighty. Okay. So um, you know they're they're doing good. Yeah. He's, and they he's... came together. I would guess about fifteen years ago, um, after Bobby left, uh, lost his wife. Okay. So it shows it's never too late. The younger woman's working very well for him then. <laughs> the age of a hundred. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Sue. Thanks a lot. All right, Kerry. Have a great Thank weekend. You. Okay, all Ciao. the best. Bye now. Bye bye.